Hours after Irene blew through, this Summer Street resident showed us this cell phone video of a foot of water in front of his house that caused flooding in his basement. This whole area was flooded, big time. Paris couldn't go through, uh, but uh, I came out and uh, we uh, cleaned them out. Like many Waltham residents, Bautista also coped with downed branches, many of which led to power outages. Almost all had been fixed by Wednesday morning. Residents on Whitman Road near the Watertown line faced one of the longest droughts going without power for approximately 60 hours. Not the much we can do. No tree or downed power line was to blame, just a mysterious pop from a transformer Sunday morning. At many intersections, streetlights were out for hours. Houses along Lexington Street Sunday night were pitch black, the only lights visible from passing cars. Same situation along this street in Piety Corner and further north in Lakeview along College Farm Road. All told, some 5,300 residences were without power across the city at various times, leading some to vent at NSTAR. No, this is the worst thing ever since um, the last storm. I mean, they're taking their time. This is summertime. In a statement Monday, an NSTAR senior VP said it was, quote, concentrating first on the repairs that will benefit the largest number of customers before addressing problems at individual homes, unquote. That was no consolation to residents in this Trapello Road home. NSTAR killed their power after a large branch fell on power lines during the storm. But across the street, Jesse Kaplan was unaffected and the tree that fell in his yard missed his house. I think it's been dying anyhow. Not as bad as we'd expected. And, you know, much worse could have happened, much worse has happened to other people. Because the tree was on city property, all the branches were chipped by the CPW. About a block south on Shirley Road, residents had the power go out at 3 p.m. on Sunday when this tree fell on power lines. But even as Eleanor Fox's food started to go bad, she kept an optimistic yeah. attitude. We're, we're coping fine. After more than 40 hours, power was back Tuesday when NSTAR came to clear the wires. But they cut the branches back only to the fence line, leaving an elderly homeowner to deal with the dangling remains. Luckily for him, a public works group promptly chipped the thinner branches and sprayed the larger pieces for subsequent pickup. A family on Montclair Ave in Lakeview had large branches fall on their house Sunday morning, narrowly missing a car. When Waltham Fire arrived about 10 hours later, they told him the city couldn't help because there was no structural damage to the house, no imminent danger, and the power lines were not affected. Like many, they had to hire a contractor to cut the tree and haul it away. This man said he dodged a bullet when a tree that fell in his mother's backyard landed neatly across the lawn, causing no serious damage. He cut up all the wood and left it on the curb. Yeah, I do have my own chainsaw, so otherwise it probably would have cost me about $2,500 to get rid of the tree. It's big money today for these things, but I already had one of the neighbors come by and he asked me, can I take the wood? I said, gladly, please, thank you very much. For Waltham News Watch, this is Chris Wangler.